Hey guys, we're uh, going to do a little bit work this afternoon in the giant excavator and I figured it'd be a good chance to do a little uh, live session. This time of year, spring is just so busy on the farm. Uh, we're doing so much work preparing for our this, this big project, these big changes and in preparation of bringing on some new animals. And so doing these live videos are a little bit easier to pull out the phone and go live. It's a little easier to do that than it is to sit in the house and record something that I filmed the day previous. Me and the baby are going to be hopping in the big machine. And uh, we were asked by a lot of different people uh, a couple weeks ago when I was in the machine and I asked, what do you want to know about the earthworks and things? Some people asked about how to operate an excavator. So we'll show you, we'll give you a little tour of the big machine, how it works, and then we'll show you what we're doing, actually I'll, I'll do that first. I'll show you what we're planning on doing today with the excavator and then we'll, uh, then we'll get in there and show you how to run the thing. So this section, all, all this section here, this used to be our garden. And now what you'll notice is since we've put the road in, the road's a little bit lower and then it kind of rises up and over there is where our latest garden is. And, uh, Max says it looks like a regular sized excavator. All right, Mac, well, I guess that depends on your definition. You tell me, 210, man, that's a pretty big machine. That bucket's, that bucket's huge. So this is, where our, this is where our garden is right now, and our garden's gonna stay there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out some of this fencing. This is old fencing we put in, not great stuff. And then this whole area here is going to become an orchard. And we're having a event in the springtime where you can come here. We're gonna have Dave from uh, Northeast Edible uh, come and help us uh, install the orchard and we're gonna do a workshop. So if you wanna come check out the Homesteady Farm, learn to plant fruit trees and that sort of thing, uh, fruit bushes, you can come join us. We'll have a date for that very soon. We'll be announcing it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that section today and we're going to just smooth it out, pull out the fencing, uh, pull out any big boulders that are sticking up, any big rocks that are left. And we're going to start to get this all towards finished grade. And then down through here, smooth out our road. All this is going to have here, we're going to have another row of fruit trees and fruit bushes. And then we're going to be putting up a brand new fence that goes all the way back there for livestock. Woo! and our section where our pigs are and our future animals will be much bigger. There'll be a lot more high quality pasture. So that's what we're doing today. Getting a bad connection warning. Let me, let me move closer to my Wi-Fi booster so we have a little bit better of a connection. All right, so Mac, you tell me. Ready? Is this a, is this a giant excavator? Here's the bucket, there's the thumb. The thumb is taller than me. So the bucket's kind of slouched, but you know, it's a pretty, pretty big machine for a farmer. So we're gonna climb up in this thing and see what we can get done today. Hey there, kiddo. Hi. Bad connection, we're still getting bad connection. Sorry guys, my butt. Sorry for that. We should be improved now. We got a better, uh, better network. We joined our other network. So, all right, we're gonna climb up in this thing and get started here. So an excavator is a awesome machine to use for doing earthworks on your farm, on your property. And uh, a couple hours in it and you can really get good in this thing. I'm gonna close the door. Okay, everyone's saying better. Hey, Ben, thanks for the super chat, man. Ben, you are so reliable. I still need your address, man, so I can send you that shirt. And uh, email me, Ben. Austin, this is Homesteady. The cows, Ben wants to know if that's where the cows are going. I'm actually starting to think about doing a beef cow because these kiddos eat a lot of food and that one's not hitting the beef yet, but he will be soon, I'm sure. So let me show you how this machine runs. We're gonna start this, fire it up. Ooh, we're gonna silence that. 
So this machine, an excavator generally uh, has two joysticks. We got one over here, and we got one over here. And those two joysticks control most of the upper part of the machine. So the body and the arm, the boom, uh, the bucket, that's all controlled by these joysticks. And then if you wanna drive the machine forward or backward, that's what these are for. You'll see those are connected to foot pedals. So the way you operate an excavator generally is, let's see if we can get this so you can see it. I gotta, I'll open the window so we can put this camera out a little further and you can see what we're doing here. The reason I'm wearing the baby is so that Kendra can get some work done while I'm in the machine. The baby loves sitting in the machine. There we go. This machine has air conditioning. It's pretty nice. We don't, not all our machines have air conditioning, but this one happens to. So we are, a I'm a little spoiled there. All right, so that should make it better. We do need a baby on board sticker. That would be awesome. <laughs> All right, let me get this out a little further. Can you guys see those joysticks yet? There we go. So now we see here are our, our joysticks. The baby's trying to reach for them. So we got one here and one here. And depending on what kind of machine you got, yeah. cat machines have different controls than this one. Yeah. This is a Hyundai. And uh, yeah. we're just gonna pull back on this lever. We're gonna put up our, our throttle. And now we're live. And so this joystick over here, this moves the house. So I'm gonna push it to, pushing it where my thumb's pointing and it turns us this direction. And then if I push it that way, it turns the body that way. So this joystick over here, again, not a cat machine. Um, this joystick operates the house where we spin. These two handles right here, you can see those handles and they go down to the foot pedals. That moves us backwards or forwards, just like that. This joystick here operates the boom arm, and I'll turn this camera around so you can see the boom arm. Oh, the baby's reaching for it. So there's the arm. If I push the, the joystick forward, it extends the boom. If I pull it backwards, it brings the boom back in. Then if I push the joystick, it's a four-way joystick. If I push it towards me, it curls the bucket in. And if I push, the joystick away from me it opens that bucket out and so when you combine the motion of the house the boom the stick and the bucket you can reach out you can dig scoop things up you can spin and what we're going to do a lot of today what you get to watch today is uh <laughs> max says i'm scaring the chickens Ben, how long did it take me to get used to the controls? I'm gonna be honest, Ben, I don't remember. I grew up in, this, in these machines. This machine here is my dad's, and uh, he's an excavator contractor, and I grew up running these things since I was young, which does help when you're young. It's a little bit easier to learn all the basic stuff. But honestly, if you rented an excavator for a couple days, usually it's better to rent them for a week uh, they do require some maintenance, but if you rent it, you're not going to have to worry about the maintenance, maybe just greasing the machine each day, which is what they show you how to do uh, when you rent the thing. And I got to tell you, you guys will see today the ability. This is a pretty big machine. This is a 210. You can rent a mini excavator, though, and you can do a ton of work with a mini excavator. And generally, you can rent one. You know, if you spend 600 bucks, you could probably rent it for a week. So if you lined up, you know, if you had a big project where you were doing some fencing, and uh, you know maybe you wanted to put in some water lines. That right there, that pole has water and electric. We put that whole line from there all the way over to the house where we're looking at over there. We put a water line in with a mini excavator. So great, great tool. I really suggest using the mini for a lot of the earthworks and they're pretty easy to learn how to, how to use and how to run. Right now the baby is, <laughs> he's reaching over. Can I push trees over with that? Absolutely. I push, I, I made myself a whole like field up on the ridge behind our house with a smaller excavator than this one. We have like a mid-size excavator. And uh, 
Okay, so Max thinking like a 700 or 850 by Giant, but way overkill for what we're doing. That's true, Mac. Yep, definitely. This is Giant in farmer terms. It's not Giant in like, you know, we're not putting a bridge in or something. But I'm just gonna reach up here today and I'm just gonna start smoothing all this out. And uh, you'll see a lot of what we're doing here. I got a kid's, kid's bat I'm gonna destroy. <laughs> uh, a lot of what we're doing here is just trying to get this smoothed out because I'm gonna bring a loader in here with a machine called a rock hound. And a rock hound is like an automatic raking machine. And uh, the rock hound's gonna come through here and grab all these small stones out of our way. See if I can work here without destroying that little bat. Now there's a really big rock over here which I had avoided pulling out before. New Holland 90, Louie wants to know, is that big enough? Uh, I tell you, those, Louis, I think it was Louie, um, those those little minis can get a ton of work done. The buckets are small. Depending on what you want to do, um, you know, it all depends on what your goals are. You know, if you want to put a road in like we did here, yeah, you need a much bigger machine. You're not going to be able to dig in. We had to dig like four feet down, and you can see the road. It's, it was like four feet down and 16, 15 feet wide. But uh, if you're just doing trenching, let's see, installing a culvert, raise the driveway to a cabin, any suggestions? I'm gonna, you know what I'll do guys when I'm done with this little thing, it's hard to catch all the comments. If I miss one, I'll be sure to go through them at the end here. So if I miss your comment, it's on my little phone far away. So I'll make sure to, to get you before we're done here. So I'm gonna gently slope this hill off. I'm gonna pluck out some of the rocks. I'm gonna call one of my children over to grab their little bat so I don't break it. Got a nice little horn on this thing. There's a plastic bat. Can one of the kids grab it? Over here, bat. Sorry for yelling in the microphone there, guys. I didn't think of that. So we're actually gonna go right up onto this section. And uh, grab it with the thumb. That's what we're doing. Mac, we're gonna grab that big old tree, we're gonna grab the fence and we're gonna tear some stuff out. Alright, we're up here. And we're gonna pull out fencing, and this kind of hurts my heart. Oh, <laughs> See if I can grab the bat with it. Let's see, guys. Can I grab the bat? Yeah, let me see if I can get it. Somebody on YouTube just challenged. I said for the kids. All right, ready, guys? Can I grab the bat? All right, pretty close. For it. Ah, good enough. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to get the baby out of this. He is not entertained with what we're doing right now. Let's see if we. Uh... All right, there we go. Let's grab this. We're gonna grab this big old log. And we're gonna get it out of here. This was the tree. If you watched the video of us dropping the tree right by the barn there, this is that tree. So now we're gonna take that. Hey, Weekend Homestead, thanks for the, uh, thank you for the super chat, man. Uh-oh, baby's crying here. Guys, go check out the Weekend Homestead channel. It's my buddy, Will. He's, uh, he's got some cool off-grid projects he's working on at his homestead. That's a, the that's a next step for us, Will, to get doing some off-grid stuff. All right, let's see here. Down 
the baby's a little happier when I move this thing. He doesn't like it when I sit still. So go check out the Weekend Homestead. Subscribe to Will's channel. He's uh, doing some remodel stuff right now. He was not too long ago taking ideas for what, what he was going to do in uh, a section of his uh, off-grid off cabin. There was a section he wanted to know what to do with it. We were telling him he should do a, a deer hanging area. A place to hang and butcher and process your own deer. I am dying for a spot like that on my property. I'm thinking about doing some kind of some kind of uh, dugout what do you call those? Root cellar. That's the word. One of those root cellars. So I can work on my deer without being outside or in my basement. So you can see here, guys, we've been doing a lot of filling down here. This is some of the work that we've been up to with these last couple, well, last couple weeks. Been filling that lower section there. So Will's asking how much it costs to rent an excavator. So like this, Will, this is a giant one. Um, this excavator is way bigger than what you need for most projects, uh, but an excavator like this would, for a week would be, you know, probably in the thousands area. Um, but we were talking about just a few minutes ago, the mini excavators, you can get so much work done as far as putting in water lines, running, you know, doing fencing, um, just all kinds of stuff. These trees here, I actually just knocked down those trees with this machine. Uh, but those mini excavators for like five, six hundred bucks, sometimes you can get them for, usually it's where if you rent them for a day or two, um, it's cheaper than the week. But after you rent them for like three days, it becomes cheaper to just rent them for a whole week. So I should just line up a bunch of projects that you want to get done. And then, uh, you know, once you got, you know, maybe some water lines, some electric lines, and then maybe some, you know, grounds, you know, just moving boulders and things. We've been over here, if you guys look over in this area, we've been filling that whole area over there. We brought it up way higher so we can fence that in and play on pasture grass and pasture seed. Uh, that's gonna, it just like doubled our pasture area. And uh, just, just uh, gonna give us so much more ability to keep animals. Weekend Homestead says he owns a backhoe. All right, yep. And rented a mini to do a large pond. Yeah, you can do, that's a great idea. That's a good idea, Will, man. I, I gotta get a pond over here. That's the, that's on the next list of to-dos. You got, did you do a video on that, Will? Putting in the pond? I'd love to see what you did. Let us know if you did, link to it. Like I said, guys, go check out, go check out uh, Will's channel. Weekend Homesteader over on, just search it. There's all the ducks, they're all watching. The ducks love watching us work. <laughs> we'll do a little drive by here. Oh, Will's doing the pond project, awesome. All right, well, we'll get to watch that, we'll get to follow that. That's something I really wanna do. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we're gonna do for uh, you know water retention. We could probably seal the pond with... The last two turkeys are doing good, Ben. The last two turkeys are doing great compared to how everyone else, you know, didn't do so hot. All right, guys, let's see the chickens over here. Let's say hi to them. Let's scare them all. Hi, guys. All right, so we're gonna pull some fencing material out here. As soon as my kids get done running in front of the... You notice they all stop and they wave. That was my, my first rule to them was, whenever you're approaching the machine, come around the front, make sure the driver can see you, make eye contact, and wave. <laughs> Lori wants me to scoop up a chicken. Oh man, that, that's a good challenge. To do like a super chat challenge, guys. Make a bet. If I can do it, we get a super chat. If I can't, then I gotta send you like a homesteady t-shirt. 
Thanks for stopping by, Will. Guys, go check out Will's channel. And thanks for the... Pull some fencing out of the ground here. All right, so this is the last bit we're gonna to film today and then I'm gonna shut the cameras off and actually get a lot of work done. So I'm just gonna explain, if you're learning how to use the excavator again, so right now I'm, my left hand is pushing the joystick over to the direction I wanna swing the house of the machine and then I can raise and lower the, the whole arm of the excavator, if I pull that left hand back, it goes up. If I push that left hand forward, it goes down. Then with my right hand, I reach out. If I push the, if I push the uh, joystick on my right forward, it lifts the boom. And then if I push my right hand away from me, it opens that bucket up. And so as you'll see, I'm reaching out to grab that fencing. And we're about to, just one quick minute, we're gonna undo hours and hours of work that I did years ago. Kinda hurts my heart a little bit. But this fencing material has just over the years gotten real rusty and real nasty. The uh, posts we put in here, we put in just natural tree posts and they're rotting away. Back when we first started, man, it was like we had to just do we had to spend the least amount of money possible on everything. And so sometimes you do things not exactly the right way just to get by for a little while. And this fencing, I mean, it lasted for a couple of years and we were able to raise pigs and chickens and goats and that sort of thing. Uh, Cheesehead, this is the largest job we've done here with the excavator. Not the largest one I've done in my life because like I said, I used to work as an excavator with my dad. But it is, it is the biggest earthworks project we've done on the farm here. That, that road was a big, big project and that filling, all that stuff took a while. And was, we've been in this for the last week or two here. So, all right, so we knocked down our posts. And now you're gonna see as I pull up this fencing, I've buried this fencing because we have pigs. I buried it and attached it to logs. So you'll see as I pull this up, we're probably gonna see me pull up a few logs. It's amazing how long it took me to put that fence up. <laughs> now it's coming down in just, a, just two minutes we'll have this thing like it never was here. Guys, what do you have planned for your homesteads this year? Let me know in the comments. What big projects are you planning? Have you got a head start on them? We had a really nice spring here, and so we were able to get a really good head start on a lot of these projects. I got electrical over there. I gotta go make sure that that's not all tangled up with the fencing. So I'm gonna hop out now and double check that. And we're gonna close down here. I'm gonna answer all the last questions I missed. Ben wants to buy a homestead. I hear that, Ben. That took us a while. It took us a while to find this place and make sure it was the right place. But once you find it, man, it's great. All right, let me check the comments. What we missed? Let's see all the comments that we've missed. Okay, let's see. So we said ponds later. Okay, rent and backhoe. Eight hours a day for use. Scaling back here. She said wants to build a pool. Lori wants to put in a road. Okay, uh, WHHS, install a culvert and raise a driveway back to the cabin. Any suggestions for culvert width and type of culvert? Um, WHHS, are you putting in pipe? Or are you just digging this out of dirt? That would depend on the answer. A Holland 90, is that big enough for trees? Oh, Lori wanted to know if a Holland 90 was big enough for trees. Uh, for pushing trees over, depends on the size of the tree. 
Not going to be great for really big trees, but you could push some smaller ones over. Okay, let's see. Mac, pressure treated posts are the way to go for sure. Yep, if you have the funds to do it. That's what we're doing now, Mac. We're going to be putting in some nice pressure treated stuff. Let's see. Clear more land for crops, Max says. Cool. Lori hasn't moved into the land yet. Building a tiny house to move out there. Cool. Building a gazebo in the backyard, she says up to. Pipe culvert of some type. Okay, so H W H H S wants to know what size for the culvert. Uh, if you're trying to drain water away, a uh, six inch pipe is good for culverts because you're gonna get a lot of debris. Generally, six inches is the smallest you're want, gonna wanna go. You might go bigger uh, if you're putting in culverts, but depending on what your goals are, maybe consider doing an earth swale and uh, the earth swale will catch water and then you could plant some trees at the top of that swale. So check out that earth swale idea if uh, depending on what you're trying to get the, rid of the water for. Build a shooting backstop, Ben says. Yes, we are definitely going to be putting in a 100 yard shooting range with a backstop down there. All right, guys, I got to shut down here. I got to get this uh, cable, this wire over here. I don't want to rip the wire out to the barn again. Thanks for watching this uh, live stream and uh, following us, of course. And thank you guys for the super chats. It's amazing, and that's how we're able to do this. Your guys' support is huge in this Homesteady channel. So thanks for watching. I got to get some real work done. I got to speed up, and I don't, I don't like working too quick if I'm not paying full attention. So I'm going to start paying attention now. Hope that helped. There's that big machine. And... Uh, if you have any questions about machine rentals or stuff, this is an area that I, you know, I worked as an excavator for 10, 15 years with my, my old man. So email me, Austin, at thisishomesteady.com, and I'd be happy to answer questions or leave them in this video. Thanks, guys.